Right, someone has written to me and said, the 4X over Land guy is saying that the Land Rover Defender or a new Range Rover will come to a complete standstill if you disconnect a speed sensor or ABS sensor. So obviously this car has lots of electronic gadgetry and what it's doing is it's looking all the time, are the wheels turning? And obviously then if you brake and one of them stops turning because it's, it's locked up, then obviously it will release the, that brake and let the brake can be done by the other wheels until it starts rolling, then apply the brake again. It's the way the ABS, and it's also used on the traction control. It needs to know if it's going. But as far as I can see, it can't do a lot because it's it's still an engine, a gearbox, and differentials. It can't do a, it can't send extra power to a wheel. All it can do is brake a wheel, a wheel that's spinning. It can brake it, which will transfer the power to the other wheel. So. I don't think it can sort of, it's, it's not like an electric car that could drive, provide extra drive to it. Right, so it can only delete. So he's claiming or hypothesizing that if, a, if as happened to him, he was out off-roading, he does some awesome stuff. He's way above my league, he's, he's out there. He does overlanding super well. And he was out driving a twig, just randomly got up and poof, ripped the, ABS sensor out of his Toyota and he was saying how cool it was the Toyota still goes bet that wouldn't happen on a Land Rover Defender new one because of the amount of electronics so someone's written to me and said come on Simon you know you want to you so we are gonna abuse the stig again and see if this works so let's have a look what we're looking at and it's a good excuse to have a look at the suspension set up and what we've got so bear in mind this is our Land Rover Defender P300 this is the Model S base spec. We've got the smaller disc brakes, which is good because we can get the steel, the smaller steel wheels on. Um, but we've got a couple of sensors here. So they look like pipes, these two, but they're not. They're, they're wires. Um, and you've got one of them is the brake pad wear sensor, which comes along here to the back and tells you when your brake pads are getting close to wearing out. But the other one goes into the hub inside and I guess inside normally there's, there's actually a ring like this a sort of coggy type ring and a sensor and it sees a proximity sensor and it sees the change I think in reluctance or whatever the sensor as these go around and it sees as the wheels turn in as long as it's seeing the little wave come in electronically of these things it knows it's turning so I've cleaned one of them so so it goes into the hub it comes along here can you get this on the camera Zach yeah is that looking good it comes along here I've left one dirty then it goes down here and it goes along here and I'm gonna disconnect it here I haven't done it yet I haven't tried any of this yet so my guess is I reckon the Land Rover is still gonna drive his guess is it won't drive and it'll even lower the suspension. Now the suspension's on low at the moment because it's in the garage. So our challenge is, can we get it out the garage? Can we take it for a ride? Now don't try this at home. Driving with an ABS sensor disconnected is like a bad idea, but it's interesting to know what will happen. Now let's talk about how lightly is it you are gonna get a twig come up. So remember you've got your wheel around a lot of this. The wheel comes very close here, so a lot of it. And they have put this guard on. If you come around the front a bit there, you can see they've put this, this guard here that protects certainly where they go into the hub. Um, this bit here could be slightly exposed. You could, I mean, you've got the track rod here that's going to offer you some protection. Um, but it could, in a freak, weird way, it, it could happen. So I think it's a reasonable test we're doing. Right, so let's have a look, Zach. It comes up, it goes along here. Right, can you film and hold the torch, so? We've got to work out how to disconnect this. Now, I will put a picture on the screen as well of the price and part number of it. So I got the engineering part number off this label and I'll put that picture on the screen and look it up now. It looks like we've got a, a bit I've got to press down here. I can feel something. Go on. There you go. Right, okay. So, and we'll probably put some, some white grease in there actually when we put it back together. But that connector all looks good. So now we have no ABS slash speed sensor. So let's put it all back together and see what happens. Right, we're all back together. Let's jump in the car, see what it does. Right, it's obviously gonna throw up a load of error codes and, right, shut your doors, Act. let's give this a go. Oh, events recorded during parking. Oh, events recorded during parking. 
Right, so right, so we've got any error messages come up. The airbag, yeah, so we've already got some, the ABS error light has come up there, and we've got some, some other error lights coming up here. We've got the, it says, okay to drive with caution, stability control's not available. Um, the airbag light is also on. Steering assistance. Steer, yeah, emergency braking and steering assistance are not available. So it's given us a lot of things that I think it would do because it hasn't got, but we, the suspension's down. Um, so let's okay to clear all that. Okay to drive with caution, emergency braking's not available. So yeah, let's hope we can clear all these error codes, eh? <laughs> right, put your seatbelt on, Zach. We're going for a, a dodgy ride with no ABS sensors. Right, let's see, does it move? Oh, I've, I have selected reverse. All right, hold on. No, it's not, it's not moving. Let's check the handbrakes off. Ah, so you have to manually release the handbrake. It looks like it didn't. So your, your handbrake is hidden down here, the electronic, the e-brake. So it's, so yeah, the airbag warning light's on. So I guess, obviously, I think that's probably because it's linked to the ABS. So we're in. Um, it, actually, at the end of the video, should we put it all back together and give it a couple of ignition cycles and see if it fixes itself or whether it is a, get the software out and redo it all clear the error code. So we, we're going backwards. Um, it sounds like we're going up. The suspension's gone up, hasn't it? Yeah. So I think we're doing all, I think we're doing all right. I think it's doing everything I would expect it to do. So Will Andrew Saint-Pierre White, he says he'll publish a, he asked Land Rover to, I'll put the screenshot. He said, Land Rover, I challenge you to prove me wrong on this, but and he'll publish a retraction, but let's have a look. So we're certainly driving. Let's see if we can put the suspension up, shall we? Camera system's all working. It hasn't told me, it'd be really cool if it said, look, no signal from wheel sensor front right, but we're driving. Uh, driving. We've got all the orange lights on, but we're, we're up, we're driving. If we were stuck in a mountain somewhere and we ripped it off, we'd still be going. No binging, no bonging. So there we go. So hopefully that's a test. We'll get back to the workshop now. We'll reconnect that speed sensor and we'll have a look if the car can fix itself. Right, let's go. Right, so the stick is all back together. The question is gonna be how many error messages, how, oh, how forgiving is it going to be for disconnecting its vital organs? Let's have a look. No. Look. Yes! Oh, I love Land Rover. Look, it's cleared all the faults. So it's really, it's, it needs a service, but that, that was there before. So, so far I'm, I know we do poke a little bit Land Rover, some little bits of software we, we think things could be improved, but and that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, let's just check it all drives. Um, yeah, but so, so the, the handbrake releases, I've got no airbag lights, I've got nothing. So if we were off-roading, and we need to do more off-roading, if we were off-roading and it snapped that cable, we could go up on the suspension, we could go down, we could drive it. Um, and then when we got to somewhere where we could fix it or replace that, and I'll put the part number on the screen, I think it's about 45 pounds, which is, yeah, it's a bit of wire, but it's not ridiculous. Um, you could fix that yourself, put that new in, and you'd be off and going. So I think on this occasion, Land Rover Defender wins out.